Today, part of what I'm going to talk about is leaning into your skills as an artist, what you're already good at, and how that can be both a good thing and a bad thing, depending on the context. And the example I'm going to use, well, also just going back through this series, is my My Hero Academia Maximum Venom episodes and My Hero Academia Let There Be Carnage, which was the third episode in that series that came out two years later. So in that sense, it's similar to my Avengers as Dragons episodes, which I recently revisited, where I did the first few around four years ago, then waited about two years and ended up bringing it back to do a new episode. But with those, I talked about how it was very apparent that I had gotten substantially better at drawing dragons. And in this case, I do think in those two years, I would have also gotten substantially better at drawing venomized characters and superheroes, My Hero Academia characters, everything in general in terms of art. But as I said back when I did the third episode of My Hero Academia, Let There Be Carnage, I think the original two episodes were actually significantly better in terms of the art. There are things that are better in the new version, but the old ones I think worked so well because I leaned into what I was good at as an artist at the time. And I don't even think this was a conscious thing that I was doing on purpose. Um, this was probably the first time I'd ever venomized something on the channel. I think that's the case, I could be wrong, but I was taking heavy inspiration from one of my favorite artists, who's one of my favorite artists back then and still is now, Patrick Brown, who at the time was doing uh, promotional art and a whole bunch of different drawings for Marvel's Spider-Man Maximum Venom uh, series. I, I think it was for the Spider-Man TV show at the time. The last Spider-Man show I watched regularly was Spectacular Spider-Man, so I'm not totally sure, but the promo art that Patrick Brown was doing of different Avengers and superheroes in general with Venom symbiotes on them was super cool and inspiring, and I was a huge fan of My Hero Academia at the time as well, so I wanted to try that out of Venomizing My Hero Academia characters. And as a bit of a tangent, I will also talk about uh, improvements I've made in my storytelling between the two episodes, but like with Avengers as Dragons, this was one of the series that originally helped cement the format of what I do on this channel, but well, Avengers as Dragons was more lore and drawings where I, I talk about, oh, this dragon can has these abilities and lives in this region, all inspired by the character that I'm adapting. In this case, I drew the characters all fitting in with one long story that I was telling through the whole episode, and in case of the first two episodes, through the first two episodes. So this is another series that's really fun for me to go back to because it's got some, some, again, I'm not a very nostalgic person, but it does have some significant nostalgic factors for where this channel has gone to because I tried out this series back then. But one thing that I wasn't nearly as good at back then when I did those first episodes was doing consistently good anatomy. I was still improving a lot at my anatomy. Anatomy is something where it's a really good idea to take some really lengthy, intensive courses that cover all the different limbs in depth and make you redraw the different muscle groupings over and over and over again. I've said many times that I took a course by a guy named Neil Fontaine on Udemy. It's like 65 hours long. It's very in-depth depth, but it's also really, really good if you just want to, if, if you have something like summer vacation or something where you can take like a week or two and just spend like eight hours that uh, a day for a couple weeks going through an anatomy course. That one is super, super useful and I'd highly recommend it. But really, I mean, lots of people have really great anatomy courses online. It really is just a matter of repeating different muscle groups and parts of the bodies over and over and over again. And even after doing a course like that, you're still going to be consistently improving after that as you're practicing, even when you don't realize that you're practicing, like just drawing characters consistently, human characters or the kinds of characters of whatever anatomy you're drawing. But anyway, so at the time, I, I wasn't as good at anatomy. I had gotten much farther than I'd been a couple years earlier, but there were still a fair number of times where my my proportions would be off or limbs uh, coming, uh, coming towards us, foreshortening would be a little bit janky. So venomizing characters actually really helped with that because there needs to be kind of a bit of inherently built-in jank 
to Venomized drawings because there's slime covering the characters, especially in this series, where which is the, the way that I like doing Venomized characters the most, where they're partially bonded to the symbiote, where they're, they're still becoming Venomized in the process of being Venomized. The goop is still overtaking them. So part of their body could slash should be bigger than another if one arm is venomized and the other one isn't because getting a venom symbiote well it can do different things to different people it can it can make your muscles bigger and make you a lot bulkier so that factor i don't think this was even intentional on my part and i knew i was doing it but that was going to help make these drawings look like i was already better than i was while also leaning into the things that i was good at my shading and lighting had improved a lot and there were some interesting examples that worked out in this case from that and my rendering style while it has gotten better since had gotten to a point where it was looking pretty cool and it was fairly consistent and so some of the drawings from this like the Todoroki Venomized drawing still holds up as one of my favorite things I've drawn on the channel. I have drawn stuff that is significantly better quality wise since but that drawing is just so cool because of the dynamism of it and that was I think think might have been the first Venomized drawing where I drew the character actually trying to tear the Venom goop off of them and I think that just looks really cool and it's an element that I've utilized since but in this Todoroki drawing where I also remember specifically consciously making his fingers be in kind of a janky position on purpose as if he's pulling at the strands and some of them are coming off more easily but some of them are, are a little bit tighter to his head and he's having a hard time pulling them off and then that paired with the the flamey kind of burst in his hand uh, with making the venom symbiote kind of kind of scramble off him a little bit more and the parts coming up onto his leg all of that paired together i think makes this such a cool drawing that i didn't reach that same height in the in the let there be carnage episode from a few years later and there are other factors involved in that as well. I don't remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure with the Let There Be Carnage episode, I was a little bit more pressed for time that week. So it was a little bit more rushed. I can't say for sure. I don't remember exactly how long I spent on each of these videos because even the most recent one was a while ago. But this, having the Venom symbiote be pulled off of a character, I think is one of the coolest elements. And just the... But even if you, if you sit here and look at this drawing, his legs are pretty janky too. Like... One of the legs feels like like I forced the perspective way too much, like one leg is really far forward and his foot is kind of huge, and if you ignore the Venom symbiote goop around it, his ankle is way too fat, which sometimes I still do draw like one character's the same character, one ankle significantly bigger than the other. You can notice that in some of my art even recently. I am still working on that. But like you can see jankiness in the anatomy if you look past the Venom symbiote and the goop. But because the, the goop and venomized parts are the most interesting thing and they add a lot of detail to the character, they distract from the parts of the drawing that I wasn't as good at. So one thing to keep in mind is that the, the reason I say this is a good thing is obviously now me leaning into what I was good at at the time for this episode back then with the first My Hero Academia Venomized episodes means that these episodes still hold up substantially better than some of my ep other episodes from, a from around that time, which a lot of them look kind of janky now compared to the stuff I'm doing. But if you exclusively lean into the stuff that you're already good at, then you're not going to improve nearly as quickly at the things that you need to improve at. Like if I just did Venomized episodes, Episodes and leaned into characters having lots of lots of visual noise around them that can look cool, I probably wouldn't have been as inclined to work more intensely on improving my anatomy. And to be fair, this is all a little bit nitpicky and like anatomy is something that there have been times where I've specifically gone, okay, I need to start working on how I draw legs or I need to start working on how I draw hands or proportions, things like that. But it is also largely just a matter of drawing lots and lots and lots and lots of characters. I mean, one of the big ups of this channel in terms of my improvement is for four or more years now, I've been drawing an average of eight finished drawings a week. So obviously doing that, I'm going to improve at every aspect of my artistic process because they're always completed drawings. I mean, back in the early days, I did some sketching videos, but for the most part, it's always been completed artwork. 
I am also nitpicking the best drawings when I think back to the original episodes. I mean, some of them are a little bit on the bland side, like the gravity one is a little bit whatever, like it looks fine. I don't think I janked up any of the anatomy too much, but you can also see more so from that one because I don't have as much interesting Venom goop stuff going, how lacking the details were in terms of my finished art and just the anatomy on a not gooped up character or a character that's not bogged down with a lot of visual noise. I think some of the other ones that I can tell I was practicing with certain parts of my art are things like the, oh my gosh, why am I blanking on his name? Dark Shadow, uh, Tokoyami. If I look at the Venomized one of that, that's one where I think it also looks really cool as an image as a whole where I can tell that I was working with my framing elements. Like I use the venomized part of Dark Shadow to kind of loop around him and frame his body so we get a good look at the thing coming right towards us, then look back at him. And I think that works really nicely. But again, if you actually take a moment to just sit and stare at the drawing and specific elements of the anatomy, it's much more simple than the stuff I do now. And you know, it's not super interesting design-wise, but it worked really well, just the piece at a distance. I, that's something I've said a lot about my older work. Some of the best stuff holds up better at a smaller size, just because the, the things, like, I was getting better and better at the the sort of thumbnail icon or the silhouette of a character and where I wanted to draw people's attention to on an image and on a character, usually drawing people's attention to a character's head or a specific action that they were doing. So I want to encourage people to try and find a balance. If you're doing something like like writing a comic that you want to try and sell or a web comic that you want to try and build an audience around or making YouTube videos where you're drawing characters, you want I, I'd suggest trying to have a blend of leaning into what you're good at while also still making sure you're working significantly hard enough at the things you're not good at. There are plenty of episodes on this channel where I've been working on on things that I wasn't good at in an episode, and the episode art didn't turn out super great necessarily, but it was still helping me on the path to getting better. And yes, there's some art that I look back at now and I go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I put that out as a video and people watched that and that was part of their entertainment for the week, but also all of those helped me get to where I am now. And they're fun for, they were obviously fun for people at the time. I was obviously, I'm obviously being harsher on myself now than I would have been back then, even if I didn't like the art as much back then. There were people that did like those drawings and videos, but now even more so, people can go back from my episodes that I'm making now, see the art that I was making four years ago and go, wow, this is how far this person's come in four years. I could do that too. Maybe I could improve even more than Christians improved in that time span. And it's certainly possible that you could. Jumping ahead to the My Hero Academia Let There Be Carnage episode, there is only one drawing from this episode that I look at that I'm like, that looks really cool and is better than the ones from the original episodes. But even it, I wouldn't say, is better than the Todoroki drawing, and that is the Himiko, Toga Himiko drawing, which her, with the Carnage symbiote, was basically the idea I had that spawned that video, because her with a Carnage symbiote seemed like such a perfect fit, and I think the drawing turned out really cool. Having half of her face uncovered, I think, looked really cool, and I think it would have been really interesting to have her trying to tear off the symbiote from a visual standpoint, but also it makes sense that she and Carnage would be such a good blend that she wouldn't, once it started getting on, she probably wouldn't be trying to tear it off. Uh, I do wish that I had gone that route with some of the other drawings in this. I can't even think of, I think the most, I mean, the most recent Venom drawing I did was Chainsaw Man in an episode that I absolutely love that admittedly I wish had done a little bit better, which was famous anime characters if they were in the Marvel Universe. And But before that, I think the last Venom episode I did was Multiversus. I probably didn't call it Multiverse's Maximum Venom, but something along those lines. And I don't even know if I did a character trying to tear off the symbiote in that either, but I do think that is some of the most interesting Venomized drawings. And in this, there's just nothing that quite really matches that. Like, the finished Carnage, uh, My Hero Academia villain and hero designs are... The, like, most of these look fine, in my opinion. The Endeavor one, I think, could have been substantially more interesting 
if I had done the flames differently. Flames are something that my tactic for doing them has changed a lot over the last few years, and I think they've actually become a little bit better as I've made them a little bit more simple. For one thing, I very rarely ink my flames now. I will plan them out in the roughing stage, but then I will use a lasso tool to block them in and, and just do cell shading on them, then a bit of extra glowy sort of lighting with a glow layer or an add layer. Sometimes I won't use the lasso tool, I'll literally just draw in a shape that I want the flame to be and then add a little bit of the of a of a more yellowy color and a bit of a more darker reddy color to add a bit more depth to it. But inking a flame, I think often maybe this is more specifically with my art style, but just makes it look a little bit worse and a little bit cheaper. And I think this is an example of that, where especially looking at the, the flames coming out of Endeavor's back, it just a, a little, the yellow inking on them, I think stands out too much in a not good way and on his feet as well. Also the flow of the flames, I don't think is great, but also even his head and how it separates from the flames on his shoulders, I don't think was super great. I think I even ended up like, adding a bunch of darkness to the flames on his shoulders to try and separate his head a little bit more from the rest of his body. And I think this one probably could have used a little bit more time with the pose. I think if I'd put his head a little bit higher up, that might have actually made it a little bit better. Although the one thing I will say, jumping back and forth between the old My Hero Academia Venomized episodes and the newer ones is my coloring is substantially, my coloring, rendering, shading, lighting is substantially better and more vibrant. I don't think I was really conscious of this until going back through this art specifically, but my art now, I am much more likely to lean into high saturation, whereas the other ones back in the day, they, they look very dull and bland in comparison. In fact, a lot of the time now when I, I don't know when I started doing this, but when I finish a piece of art, I will, when I'm bringing it into After Effects to either add a background in and export it for the editing in a video, I will bump up the contrast and the saturation a little bit a lot of the time, a, a little bit a lot of the time, like just up, up the saturation and colors a tiny amount, but pretty much every drawing I do, I do that. Or I'll, I'll lower the dark, uh, I'll darken it up a little bit, maybe if it's a creepier drawing, up the contrast more, just playing around with those sorts of levels to give it one last little extra pop. And I guess another thing I'll say between the two that's better in the more recent one, which really, th there are a lot of things that just in terms of skill set are better in the newer ones, but I think I was just experimenting more with the old ones. Well, also, I guess that kind of contradicts what I'm saying, but I was, I was experimenting with things that I was good at. I guess, or, or with things that I knew I had already learned to a certain degree in the old ones, whereas the, the more recent one feels like I was just hoping that my elevated skill set would mean that I could spend a little bit less time and still do a better episode, and that's not necessarily always the case. But sorry, that was a distracted tangent. The thing that I was going to say is that the backgrounds in the newer episode are significantly more interesting, I think. Like the old ones, I just added a paper texture and like a pop of some random color with a, a sort of gradient in to try and focus us more on the characters' heads, which like in terms of composition didn't always work. And I've, I've gotten better at thinking through my composition of my images, even for images where I'm not drawing the background in. So all of the art in this episode, for instance, although I will say that even the most recent Carnage episode, I don't think has some of my best examples of that. I think the um, spinner drawing, he feels like he's pushed a little bit too down to the bottom of the frame. And if I thought about the fact that I was going to make him a square image more so as I was doing that drawing, I might have changed the pose up. Although to be fair for that one, I drew the pose a whole bunch of different times. I was, for whatever reason, I was really struggling with Skinner's pose. But I do think my, my graphic design, which isn't really a focus on this channel, but does make a substantial difference in the drawings at times, I think that's something I've significantly improved at as well. And I, I don't think I was bad at it at the time. In fact, I worked for a while as a 
I mean, I did a bunch of different artistic jobs at all of the animation jobs I had, but one of my core jobs was doing motion graphics design, which obviously a big element of that is graphic design. But I, I really like when I make a background for a character, a graphic design background, that really helps emphasize the drawing. And I think in this case, it's not one of my best ones, but I think, think for the Endeavor drawing, it really helped ups the quality of this drawing and with the um, with the Toga Himiko one it helps as well picking the right color for the background of the character is really important I find for making a good graphic design background with Toga I think the green greenish yellow works well it's a very high contrast to red which is most of her design because red and green are contrasting colors or What's the other term for it? Some people call it contrasting colors, some people call it complementary colors, which sounds like they contradict each other, but they mean the same thing. And then I think also with the Endeavor drawing, it looks really cool, partially because I made his eyes deviating a little bit from normal symbiote stuff. I made his eyes a sort of glowing teal to blue gradient, which kind of matches the background behind him. So it really helps draw us into the eye, having the background be the same color as the eyes, while nothing else on the character is that same color as well. I hadn't really thought about this until I started recording, but the fact that venomizing stuff used to be me really leaning into what I was good at and kind of helping me conceal the stuff I was worse at might be part of the reason that I haven't gone back to it as much since. I mean, part of it is also once I've done a topic tons of times, both like audience interest can kind of wane in it a little bit and sometimes my interest in it can wane a little bit although i mean i still love drawing venomized stuff and things like dragons but now i also have so many different series on this channel that it's very hard to keep up with going back to all of them and all the different topics that i like working with and my audience likes working with but also nowadays it's just like venomized art used to be some of the best looking stuff because it did conceal some of the things that i was less good at nowadays i don't really Really need those big flashy elements to conceal the less good stuff that I can do. Like if I look at the Pokemon superheroes episodes, I, that, that I think some of those has a nicer blend of cool flashy elements while not needing those elements to conceal the anatomy of the character because I have gotten significantly better at doing anatomy that is consistently good in my art style. I don't always nail it. There are, there are, I can probably show on screen some drawing that I don't like how the anatomy turned out, but the my consistency has gone up way more, which is something that's going to happen with you if you're consistently practicing and getting better. But going back to the other part of that, the interest just sort of waning, or maybe it's just the algorithm not pushing out an idea as much. There were Venom episodes that I would do that I thought were some of my best, like I haven't looked back at it recently, but the Star Wars Venomized episode I did a little while back, when I did that at the time, I thought that was some of my best Venomized art, and then the video didn't really do anything views-wise, so I was just like, okay, I'll, I, you know, probably start pivoting away from this a little bit. And th again, that's not to say that I'll abandon a topic if it just doesn't do well, but because there are so many things that I like drawing that also do well, it is easier to just go towards those things. But I do plan on doing another Venomized episode and definitely another My Hero Academia based episode. I've been meaning for a while to do My Hero Academia heroes as villains or something in that ballpark maybe My Hero Academia characters if they were different villains like DC villains or Marvel villains because I like I, I'm caught up on My Hero Academia's current season and the the show is now past where I've read in the comics and I'm so everything that happens in the show is new to me now and ah uh, it's such a good show I've been getting much more heavily into anime recently because I got a crunchy roll account and I've watched things like Spy Family and Welcome to Demon School and okay I'm getting into rambly territory now, so that means I've probably covered everything that I really wanted to for this episode. I do hope this was useful. This is obviously a video podcast sort of format that I'm trying out. If you want another public episode like this, there's the Avengers as Dragons episode. Um, this is also inspired by a weekly Patreon exclusive podcast that I do called the Design Notes Podcast. There's like 16 or so episodes out currently, and I think two or three of them released at the time of this video going out are video episodes that you can only see if you're a patron. Huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. 
But again, let me know if you like this format on YouTube. I, I assume it's, I mean, I don't like going into something with a negative outlook, but I do assume these episodes are going to do a bit less well than my regular episodes. But I also know that there are lots of people that from the comments I saw in that last episode who like episodes like this and want to see more like this and learn things from this. Again, the best way to cast your vote to see more stuff like this is to like, comment something you'd like me to talk about, subscribe if you're not subscribed, or even just share this episode that you think with someone you think might learn something from it. But regardless, this was fun for me to make, and I hope there was something insightful or useful for you. And again, I do plan on going back to Venomizing stuff or My Hero Academia stuff at some point in the hopefully near future. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next one, whenever that is. I don't know what date I'm releasing this yet.